Hello and welcome back. In this lesson, we will download, install, and configure the Ubuntu desktop environment. We have reached a point in the series of sessions that we require a target computer to safely conduct port scans using tools like Nmap, HPing3, Sniper, and other cybersecurity tools. It is crucial to never direct these tools towards computers that you do not own or do not have permissions to scan. Doing so may be considered an act of aggression. Initially, we began with VirtualBox and subsequently installed Kali Linux as our offensive security platform. Now we need a target computer. Enter Ubuntu. So what is Ubuntu? Ubuntu is a popular open source desktop operating system. It is developed and maintained by Canonical LTD and a community of volunteers. The first version of Ubuntu was released in October 2004, so it's almost 20 years old. Ubuntu is primarily used on personal computers and is available for free download and installation. Ubuntu aims to provide a user-friendly, secure, and customizable operating system based on the principles of open source software, which is why we choose it for training. The how. Ubuntu is built on a Linux kernel and uses the GNOME desktop environment, providing a graphical interface and a wide range of software applications. The rest of the how is what this video is all about, so let's get into it. First, you'll need the companion guide, which you can find through the link in the show notes below. Also, if you enjoy this content, please subscribe to the channel to ensure you never miss any new videos. So we're ready to get started. We have our companion guide on the left. And the first step is to visit the Ubuntu.com site. And here we are here, we have it. And it says navigate to the download section, which we can do that here. And it says go ahead and get Ubuntu desktop. So I'm going to click on Ubuntu desktop and there's an option to download the 22.04.2 version. I'm going to click on that. And then eventually what's going to happen is going to kick off a dialog box that's going to automatically save it to my downloads folder. I already have it here, so I'm just going to cancel out of it, but you're going to click on it and it's about a five gig file. So about a, maybe about five minutes or so, and then we'll come right back. But while we're doing that, I'm going to cancel and also click the download instructions that we've done that already. So we're ready to proceed to step two, where it says create a new virtual machine. It says launch virtual box and click on the new button to create a new virtual machine. So I'm going to alt tab over to virtual box. I already have it open. And since I don't need uh, the browser anymore, I'm just going to resize virtual box so you can see that a little bit better. So I want virtual box to come over on the side over here. I'm going to get rid of the browser. So I'm going to tuck that away. I'm going to put VirtualBox basically right about a split screen here so we can see that a little bit better. And then what we're going to do is actually follow these on-screen instructions. So we're going to put this on top. I want to make sure that I'm not on the Kali virtual machine, right? So I want to go into the welcome screen and I get a new set of options here. So it says click on the new button and it's going to provide me with a dialog box that we're going to put in the center here right next to the instructions. And it says, go ahead and provide a name for this new VM. And I'm going to call it Ubuntu. So with Ubuntu, if you notice, as I start typing, the version changed over here. It's going to assume it's a 64 bit. I'm going to say, yes, this is fine. The next step is to select the ISO. So I'm going to click this off. I'm going to select the ISO, the ISO file that we just downloaded. And it's in the downloads folder. So this is where my ISO file is. And I'm also going to skip the unattended. I want to do this manually so you can get to see some of the options. So we'll click next and we're going to select this as being complete. And we're now going to step three, which is allocate the memory. Okay. So I'll keep this on the side over here and it says assign two gigs of Ram. It's already here at two gigs of Ram. So I'm going to accept the defaults. This is for special operating systems only. So we will not check this off. I'll click next and also say that step three is done and go proceed over to step four. Now on step four, it says create the virtual hard disk now and select about 25 gigabytes. That's great. So we're doing the storage portion of this. 25 gigs seems about right. We do not have to add a virtual hard disk so we can leave these blank. We'll click on next. So we're going to go ahead and select this. And it says, go ahead and take a look at 
the summary of the virtual machine settings. I take a look at all of this here. It looks decent. So I'm not going to um, be concerned about that. And I'm going to click finish. And we have installed Ubuntu as far as a virtual machine, but now we have to install the operating system. So we're going to select step five as being complete. And now we're going to start the virtual machine, the Ubuntu virtual machine. So I'll click on start and give that a moment. And let's just see how long that takes. Okay, it says try or install Ubuntu. I'm going to make this a little bit bigger with the screen, but it's not taking over the full space. And if you remember, when we come here, we have a virtual screen size. I'm going to accept 200 just to make it a little bit bigger. I can make it bigger again, but this is good enough for this video. I'll move it over to the side a little bit and we're going to hit enter and we're going to actually start up the installation process for Ubuntu. So we have invoked the installation process for Ubuntu. And at this point, I'm going to select the language preference, which is English for me. I'm going to say install Ubuntu. And at this point, we're just going to follow the on-screen instructions as it says here in step seven. So it's English keyboard layout. I'm going to click continue. What happens with this is that it's a normal installation with basic web browser utilities. Later on, I can add a couple of other uh, applications if we want to. And we also say download the updates while installing Ubuntu. This makes it faster after installation. So I'm going to click continue. Okay, so at this point, it's telling me right now that there is no operating system. What would I like to do? This is a fresh install. I'm going to erase the disk, which is the 25 disk, the virtual disk that we specified earlier. And it's going to install a fresh version of Ubuntu. So I click on install now. It gives me a warning that I'm about to change the disks. That's okay because this is a fresh install. Now I have to make my time zone preferences. I am in New York, so I'm going to click continue. And this is where we can name the device. Now, if you want to, you can call it something like Ubuntu. That's fine. I'm probably going to do that as well. I'm going to call mine. Um, my login name It's going to pick a login name for me. This is going to be the computer's name. We can now add an, uh, a password. I'm going to pick a strong password. With the strong password selected, I'm going to require my password to log in. We are not using Active Directory for this one here. We click continue. And now Ubuntu is in the installation phase. Now this may take about anywhere from five to 10 minutes. So you can go grab a cup of coffee or your favorite beverage, come back in about 10 minutes and we'll check in then I'll be back. So we're back. We see that the installation is complete. That took about 10 minutes or so. So we're instructed to restart the Ubuntu virtual machine. We're going to do that. Click the restart button and that's going to come back in about a minute or two. So let's, let's wait for that to go through. Okay, so we see that it was fully rebooted. Here I am, I'm going to log in with the credentials that we created. So that's my username. Let me enter my credentials. I did that and now I'm about to be authenticated and uh, hopefully if everything went well, what Ubuntu will do is allow me to come in and I now have a uh, root access because I am the administrator here. Of course, we will have to sudo. There are some housekeeping tasks here so we can connect online accounts. I'm not going to do any of these. I'm just going to next out of all of these screens so I can get into the Ubuntu screen. So I don't actually need my VM right now. So here's what I'm going to do. A couple of things. Number one, I'm going to uh, select step seven as being completed. I'm going to move my Ubuntu VM over here and I want to show you something. You see this additional uh, white space here? We're going to install guest additions. So we restarted and enjoy. Yes, we're going to have a lot of fun in the remaining portion of this uh, lesson series, not only in this particular video, but other uh, subsequent videos. Let's go ahead and bring this on top and we're going to actually install guest additions. Guest additions is going to give us a lot more functionality. So in order to do that, I have the virtual machine here. Just give me a little bit more real estate. 
and it says with the virtual box manager selected we're going to uh go in i'm just going to do show if that ever happens to you just click on show it brings it up i'm going to in the menu i have devices i want to install the guest editions cd rom and remember we have the companion guide that has all of these instructions and i see that the disc was mounted right over here and i need to get into a terminal i can do Control alt t uh, I can also just go open in terminal over here in Ubuntu. So we're going to write in a couple of commands. I'm going to just do this real simply. I'm going to do CD and get into the media. So I'm going to tab over. My home directory is the name of my user. And I'm going to do VBox, tab, and here I am. I'm all set up. Depending on the settings, you may have to run this uh, CH mod, change mode, and make it an executable. Here's what I can do here. I can do an ls, which is list the files, all archive long, and I'm going to do vbox, and just take a look and see um, if that file, what that, does that file look like? And it already has the execute, I'm good to go. So what I'm going to do is actually run the command because I want to install the guest editions. So this requires sudo. So we're going to do sudo super user do. I'm going to do dot because it's in this directory. I'm doing the vbox. And it's going to ask me the password. Just give me a second while I enter it in. And voila, it's starting to install the guest editions. So we're going to give it a moment. It should only take a couple of minutes. So we'll be back in a minute or two. Okay, so guest editions are installed. I get a couple of warnings here. It says, this system is currently not set up to build kernel modules. I have to install the GCC, it's a compiler. Make Perl packages from your distribution. We're going to do that after a reboot. I'll hit enter here. Okay, this is fine. I'm going to clear. And at this point, we're going to reboot the machine with the sudo reboot command. So super user do, reboot, and we'll be back. And we are back. So we see that Ubuntu has rebooted. It has entered into the login screen. I'm going to put in my login credentials. It'll authenticate me. While that's happening, we want to observe a few things. One, it is a lot more fluid now. For example, if I was to resize Ubuntu, it's going to have full screen capabilities. I have shared clipboard. I can share folders. I have just have a lot more functionality that we can highlight in the show notes. So I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so that way we have more real estate. I do not need the virtual box manager, so I'll just tuck it aside. And we have Ubuntu full screen here, at least half screen on this side. So let's do a little bit of the housekeeping we talked about. So we installed the guest editions that's done, the ease were the steps that we took to do that. And then we ran the VBox Linux editions that run and we did a reboot and here's where we are. Now, during the installation of guest editions, we were prompted to install a couple of applications like the GCC, which is a compiler, Make and Perl. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, once again, I can get into the terminal a variety of ways we've seen this. One easy way is to right click and I can show the desktop in terminal. So I'll go right into the desktop here and I'm actually going to type in those commands. So it says sudo apt. Oops. So that's the package manager, sudo apt install, I tab over GCC and minus Y or tack Y to accept the yes, hit enter. It's going to ask me for my password and we just watch it install the uh, package. So once it's done, we'll be back. That was quick. It took about 30 seconds or so. So we have more packages to uh, install. So the make package is another one that we need to install. So I'm just going to do the make package. Just do that as well. And let's just see how the make goes. Great, make is done. Let's do that for Perl. So we type in for Perl. We'll let that go in. Okay, so we're all done with those. Now this is one of, uh, this is more of my personal one. So it didn't say to do this in the guest editions, but remember in a previous class, we looked at the if config utility, if config. So if you remember, if I want to see an IP address, I can do IP adder and I can get the information for the IP address, the local loopback, the F0. And if I wanted to use if config, 
by default it's not on Ubuntu because it is considered a deprecated tool set. However, there are some tools that we may want to install and I can go ahead and do that with the net tools command. So I'm going to install and in this case here is going to be net tools. And it's going to install a number of tools that um, I'm used to because I was using different distros. So in this case here, I'm going to try if config. And now we have it. So now I have if config because of the net tools. So I like what I see here. I'm going to clear and I'm also going to do a sudo app update. So we do sudo the package manager here. I'm going to do update tabbed over. I'm going to combine this into not only the update to see available updates, but I also want to get all of the upgrades while I'm at it as well. And I'm going to just hit the minus Y flag. I'll put that into the documentation, hit enter, and it's going to get all the latest updates and apply them. So while I'm here, I'm going to tick this off as completed. Also do a little housekeeping on the documentation and we'll be back when it's all done and we're back so that took about five minutes or so to do the update and the upgrade so now i know that i'm all set with a uh, a fresh install of ubuntu i have guest editions installed i'm going to give this a nice fancy reboot to get into uh fresh for the next exercise but before we do that i'm going to check this off as done but i just want to walk you through something just real quickly i'm going to minimize this go back into virtualbox manager and go into the concept of virtualization. So I'm going to alt tab back to the virtual box and I'm in virtual box manager. And we spent a fair amount of time here working with Ubuntu. So we downloaded the ISO file, we installed it to our specifications, we configured it, we installed guest editions, we have these post installation tasks that we went through. I wanna preserve this state by performing a snapshot. So in over here in VirtualBox, the VirtualBox manager, we have snapshots and snapshots allow you to take, well, what it looks like a picture or a instance of your virtual machine. And I can go ahead and do that. So this one, I'm going to say take, and I'm going to name this one and I'm going to say fresh full install. That's just going to be for me, right? So it's a fresh full install. And it's going to have the date for me. So I know this was done. It's taking a snapshot and it takes the, the whole thing and basically turns it into a file. Now, why that's important is that as we continue with this course, we will make changes and we want to make sure that we have a recovery point. Now, keep in mind, snapshots are not backups. This is not a backup strategy. This is a recovery strategy. For example, if I just took my snapshot here now, I made a setting and something went horribly wrong with my virtual machine, I don't have to reinstall. I can just go right back in and restore from a snapshot, not from an installation. So we'll do a lot more of this. I just wanted to point out that you can take these snapshots. You basically right click, look at all the settings here. You click on this little ellipsis here with a snowman icon, you have snapshots. And in snapshots, I can uh, take a snapshot. And at this point, I can do a number of things. I can delete it. If I want to restore one, I could take a look at it here. I can also take more snapshots. So this is a quick way of looking at snapshots. We'll see more of them. The next course we will do PFSense, which is an open source firewall. So we can totally firewall our environment and really do cybersecurity testing in a safe space. So here we are, I'm going to reboot. But before I do that, I didn't want to uh, close out this video without wasting your time. So we did the snapshots you can have access to the companion guide and i'll see you in the pfsense video